Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're going to talk about GoPro Hero 13. So let's dive deep into it. So what exactly is this GoPro 13? Well, it's a take core of a GoPro 13, uh, 12, sorry, and uh, have a little bit of improvement, add one feature, uh, high speed burst mode and uh, bring back the GPS that they used to have. Uh, basically, they removed in 12, they had it in 11. So they're like, okay, let's bring it back. So you can now do this because you have the data uh, requirement. Basically, metadata of the GPS is there, so your video overlays can be made realistically, so to say. And finally, in 2024, they re realized that Bluetooth can actually receive audio. So Bluetooth audio support is there, meaning you can use normal earbuds and talk to it and the audio will be captured. You can even use DJI uh, microphones. However, DJI mic's quality would be compromised. Uh, the most likely reason is that when DJI is communicating with its own DJI hardware, it is using proprietary protocol. Even though it's over Bluetooth pipeline, the protocol is proprietary. It's almost similar to how if you have a Sony headset and a Sony smartphone, phone they have a, a different kind of um, interface bluetooth interface for uh, low latency and high fidelity audio codecs normal codecs is there that's a fallback but there is a high fidelity one uh, i think uh, apt x i think it's called so something is there extra on top of bluetooth which is not there in gopro and dji microphone so if you have dji microphone it will work but do not expect the same high fidelity that you will get with uh, other dji microphones so uh, microphone and camera combination. So, but again, a very good improvement and making uh, moving in good direction. So we are happy for that. Now, this was the whole image that they started with. Basically, it's a whole new lens ecosystem. They're almost making it into a mirrorless camera. And uh, the idea is that if you, with all these puppies, you can finally get a pro quality output. And uh, they did upgrade one core fundamental is the hinge mechanism that was on the bottom is now upgraded with a magnetic clamp system. Uh, how DJI has that? So something similar, they have it. So very subtle upgrades and uh, most upgrades is in accessories. So what was the performance? Now performance, they are talking about like this is from their um, media uh, to press kit i would say uh, the code has been refactored meaning uh, gopro has a really bad reputation now and again this reputation is kind of random because some people suffer a lot some people do not suffer it uh, is that the firmware is unstable it crashes a lot it hangs a lot it freezes a lot a lot of issues are basically it's not a device where you can just turn it on trust it it's uh, very unstable nowadays so and again it is big enough issue that enough people have complained that gopro itself knows this that it is an issue and this uh, launch event they were like very clear about that no we have worked our ass off may remade the whole code base refactoring it to improve things now uh, basically they are trying to reduce crashes and freezes now there are a lot of people who apologize for gopro and says that uh, it's happening because of poor sd card now i'll give you a real world example i have this canon 800d now uh, because of the high bandwidth uh, that video file all i format writes into your sd card sd card wears down yes there is a physical device that wears down the electron get that traps electron charges it wears down, it becomes weak. So what happens? Uh, well, there is a controller in the SD card itself that is trying to manage all those things. But if uh, wear becomes too much, the write speed goes down. So if I'm uh, trying to record this video, like I'm doing right now, and the card no longer can keep up, uh, the camera shows an error where it's like, okay, card is not meeting the reads, it stops. There is no hanging, there is no crash. So if you have a poor SD card in your uh, basically GoPro, it should not cause freeze up. It should not cause hanging. It should be simply like, okay, your SD card is garbage. But that's not happening. So there is fundamental flaw in the code base. Again, they are refactoring it to fix it. And uh, this is their um, data point, so to say, is that pow uh, power cease is now down to 90%, uh, 99%. Thermal case uh, shut down because again, there is a very good chance if you have poor unoptimized code, it may be cooking the hardware unnecessarily. So that is now down by 60%. Camera freezes cases has went down to 67%. So fundamentally, they are improving the essence of it which should not be this bad let that be very clear it's very bad and it's not a poor sd card let me be very clear if it's a sd card failure it should show a message freaking your sd card is away it should not hang <laughs> so that has been uh, fixed now be mindful we cannot review this this will only be a um, common for us after let's say uh, five years or ten years from now not even five ten years two three years from now but again right now you cannot judge it
another aspect the burst mode that is the true add on is like you if you have uh, go to 5.3k resolution like almost that full square one you can do up to 120 fps but only for five seconds because again the throughput is not high enough to sustain it and if you reduce your resolution uh, to 900p uh, this puppy can give you 360 frame per second and uh, that will give you 15 seconds now be mindful some places are saying 10 second uh, gopro website is saying 15 seconds so i am writing 15 second here and uh, if you reduce the resolution to 720p it, you can go up to 400 fps 15 seconds of buffer now that translates to like around 15 seconds for 30 fps video you are looking at few minutes like almost a music video uh, so is this good depending on your use case now be mindful uh, 720p is not great but again, if you are watching it in mobile phone and the scene is dynamic enough, meaning if people are focusing on, oh, whoa, look at the water, look at this thing, nobody's going to give a damn, oh, it's pixelated or it looks ugly. It's like if the scene is dramatic enough and the high speed makes it uh, better, people will just enjoy it. But would it be like, whoa, high speed camera? No, it's not a high speed camera. And uh, they have the same systems where you can do square shooting and that allows you to have framing in post, meaning now you can change a square for Instagram. Uh, horizontal for tiktok but you know sorry vertical for tiktok horizontal for youtube you can do all of that post shooting you shoot the whole system which mind you like this is a very clever technology and i'm genuinely shocked why it's not default in every camera to have a freaking square sensor lens is always round the only shape that can cover whole of the lens is square so just have a square system even if you do not want that like you know full uh, output at least have the electronic select function where it's like okay camera is like this but i can rotate it or more like that so it, that, that's I am really happy. That's a clever system. But again, they have been doing it, if I'm not mistaken, for three times. So this is there. Uh, one another uh, firmware upgrade is uh, now it supports hybrid log gamma, meaning not only it shoots uh, HDR, it puts it into a codex that is easily supported by all television. Meaning if you play back the files captured from here, it will actually play in HDR. You do not have to go through video editing pipeline to like, you know, um, make it pop, so to say. The protocol is there. So that's the performance side of things. Now here's the deal, the camera is not the topic. Topic is the accessories. The whole launch was only focused on uh, basically the accessories you can buy for this goddamn device. One of them was really bad, that really pissed me off. But uh, like this is bad. Basically, you can buy ND filters and it will allow you to control your exposure. Now you can get motion blur and all that stuff. I'm like, cool, awesome, GG. Here's the deal, why the heck you do not have gain control? Like. This is an electronic circuit. It has an analog to digital converter. All analog to digital converter by law of physics has a gain setting. Again, it could be locked. It could not be very flexible, but it will have, to, it will be there. So uh, why don't we have a simple setting? Let's, let's assume this puppy is running at 250 uh, ISO. Why not allow me to drop it to 50? Why do I need to buy extra pieces of glass that you can sell me again and again? Because again, they are external, they will break, fragile stuff. Not necessary. And uh, the lenses are far more expensive because uh, they are smart lenses, meaning there is a bit of electronics built into it. Now, I am genuinely shocked why the heck it was not there in the previous iteration because again, previous iteration is only one or two years ago. Uh, this almost feels like they were like, let's hold back to it. If our stocks goes down too much, then we'll launch it as a new thing. Whoa. So it's almost like how your um, basically DSLR and mirrorless has an electrical contact. Same is there, but it's not electrical. It's like a, some sort of a NFC, I would say, uh, where it talks to the camera. And now you're like, why do you need that? Well, here's the deal. If um, you can talk, like, let's say you put an ultra wide lens system, it changes the video scalar, so to say. So it looks proper. It has to do that. Otherwise it will look wonky as hell. So you have to turn on the setting and use the device. And then when you remove the lens mod, you have to undo that setting. Many times people find that to be very cumbersome and very difficult. Again, if, if you just like put it and forget it, no problem. But it's not put and forget. You have to remember to do that extra setting. Many people do, many people do not, but it's a hassle, unnecessary hassle. So this time they have fixed it. So if you put uh, lenses, it will detect that you have put something in it. It will detect what it is and it will uh, change setting accordingly. Consequence, you have to buy a whole new lens arc, uh, system. Past one will not work and this will not work with the past devices, past GoPros. So, yeah. And, uh, and it also has like very big topic about anamorphic lens because now you can do full cinematic and all that. Now, anamorphic, if you do not understand what does that mean, think in this way. JJ Abram is popular for light streaks, right? How the heck that happens on normal camera? It does not. You have to squish the image so you get that long, super duper hyper long, uh, you know, lens flare, so to say. And for that, you need amorphic lens systems. Now, here's the 
this is cool and all it's not released it's not real it, there are only seven pieces of it and it's not even pre-release it's like yeah we are working on it it's not complete but they announced it launched it and given it like uh, under construction pieces like seven pieces i think in the worldwide to some youtubers and it's like okay now it's like it's coming soon it's not even like pre-order it's coming soon it's gonna take a while and they have claimed that it should come in 2025 <laughs> so that's why they are talking about this not the body <laughs> talking about this rather than camera because everything is about this and these are expensive uh, like you know ultra wide lens mod is like freaking 99 dollar damn uh, macro lens mod, oh micro lens mode now has a focusing system so that puppy is 130 dollars damn and uh, nd filter pack is like 70 dollars Macro lens, uh, max lens mod 2.0, that's $100. Amorphic lens is uh, uh, $130. Yeah, these are expensive things for a freaking system. Now, one good technology that did came out of this is basically this. Like, let's say you want to do time lapse. You're going to run out of battery and you want a very long time lapse. Your card can be like, I got this fam. Uh, you want a way to externally power it. Magnetic. So, Replace the door, put a new door. That door has uh, basically USB plug on one end and electrical pogo pin on the other. And because of the magnetic design, bam it. So you do not compromise the waterproof uh, seal and all that. And yes, they did design in such a way that you, even if you do not have a battery inside, it will still work. So you can run it from a big power bank and just like go enjoy, have fun. Uh, assuming it's you are doing it in a cold environment or not doing something stressful time lapse recording is not stressful so there is a very good chance it can do that for a very long duration so this is a really good system and it is also backwards compatible to meaning if you have gopro 12 or um, 12 11 and 10 if i'm not mistaken 10 i'm not sure but uh, two three steps back it does go and if you have that you can just buy this door and have the same functionality and here's the tragic part you have to buy the door for this camera also for basically go pro 13 that magnetic door is not default you have to buy extra so yeah it's a, it's all about accessories and a new battery they have changed the whole new battery so generally people when they're going to uh, action camera generally end up collecting a lot of batteries four to five is very common uh, here they're like okay what if we heated all of that created a new battery now is it significantly different than from the past no that claiming thing but the, all the claims are barely in five to ten percent range none of the claim is like okay it's ten times better or even twice as better it's barely ten to fifteen percent and the most frustrating part is it's still not fast charging chemistry so that was the one of the most what the hell are you doing kind of complaint but like this and they are saying now wi-fi is better i really find that part odd it's like how can your wi-fi be better you are not saying you have put a new antenna how the heck wi-fi uh, it has wi-fi 6 i'm like wi-fi 6 means nothing it means nothing zero nothing so i looked into their uh, spreadsheet long spreadsheet and it's like yeah it's exactly the same as last one because they redid the code there is a very good chance now they have actual efficiency so they can dump file quickly so it's almost like handshake was always there wi-fi 6 handshake was there it's just that it was not able to throughput utilizing that it's like processor is like so overloaded now it's professor uh, processor is a bit more relaxed so it's actually increasing throughput by 30 to 40 percent and how do i know this is bad because they are not saying mbps Again, you should be able to reach a point of uh, matching the M uh, SD card. SD card, micro SD card barely can go up to 80 Mbps. Uh, Wi-Fi can easily do that, but uh, this cannot do that. And they don't even have USB 3.0, so you can't even... Uh, basically, it will be quicker for you to just pull the SD card, dump it into a proper SD card reader. So that's there. And a bit better thermal, because in the front of it, now they have a bit of a metal uh, that is acting as a heat sink to improve the like this area small heat sink area is there so it's all about accessory not the camera the accessories and the only one accessories that i found really useful is this magnetic system other than that nothing else was like whoa now this is a very sad release because uh, they can't keep making new camera every year again mobile phone companies can do that but they generally have giant teams a lot of people boat a load of people and truck load of money uh, gopro is not that that's not that guy gopro is not that guy so gopro trying to do oh last august we released something this august we are releasing something that is really sad it's not doing that and what is the primary weakness why their equipment is not like whoa the primary weakness is soc uh, early days there they were buying soc from someone else and uh, in somewhere they decided they will make their own soc gp1 if i'm not mistaken that's the name they made it and they kept using that soc for four to five generation and it was barely getting anything done it was like that's the time where their reputation started to crash because again your hardware was like running on old soc 
which was your first SOC, it was not optimized enough. Uh, it was like crashing, freezing, all of that's maximum of the complaint happened in that part, last generation of GP1. This is GP2. I think this is the third iteration of GP2. Uh, so that is the weak link. They do not have the same horsepower like Samsung does for Exynos or MediaTek does for Dimensity or uh, Qualcomm has for Snapdragon. They do not have that kind of SOC. And yes, the SOC on these puppies are complex. You cannot just like, oh, it's a minor thing. No, it takes time. Heck, it takes time for uh, Sony, Nikon and Canon to do those, uh, their, you know, their flagship chips. So their SOC is the weak link. And again, those companies like uh, Sony, Canon and Nikon, they take their time. They make a new SOC, they take their time. They never go like one year, two year, three year. They take their time. So they are not taking their time, so they are not polishing the devices uh, and they are overcooking the old hardware and they are still stuck in small sensor, still, which again GoPro was like not really great when it was like in the peak, but it is now it's like bro, others are exceeding you so badly like side by side in the early days, if you had DJI and GoPro, everybody is like to at best they are similar, at worst they are like GoPro is better. What it is right now is like GoPro and uh, DJI and all that cool and all. The moment you go to low light, GoPro is like, I can't handle this. Smartphones have better low light nowadays. And uh, DJI's, they figured it out like for low light, either you need a lot of computation horsepower or you need a giant sensor. They are like, what if you put a giant sensor? Some of them have one inch sensor. So this insistence of GoPro for not utilizing external SOC, not utilizing big sensor, it's still keeping them exactly where they were five years ago. It's not like, whoa, it's exactly same. Yeah, their, uh, you know, image stabilization is a bit better. But here's the, the past civilization was not bad. They reached that point, like point of diminishing return has been crossed. It's like hyper stabilization 3.0. It's like, it's not that much better compared to 2.0. Because again, not that 2.0 was bad. It's just that it was so good. It's like now you are making, you know, minor improvement. So, so why they are focusing so much on accessories? Well, accessories is a high margin ecosystem. What does that mean? That simply means, uh, let's say you are making the body. It costs you $100 to make and you sell it for $300. That's cool and all. But here's the deal. Accessories, you can make it for $5, sell it for $70. That's the reason. I mean, that's the reason why Apple does not, uh, you know, did not want it to go to USB-C. All the accessories they were making, there was a sticker made for iPhone. That sticker was bringing millions of dollars for Apple. It was a freaking sticker which they did not even give you oh, here's a sticker roll they're like no print it it's just that we allow you to print that imagine how much money they were uh, like you know uh, they were willing to risk again that's why they were fighting against eu for USB-C directive because again once you have USB-C, you cannot say made for iphone once you have lightning made for iphone made for i devices so we can f the customer so they are doing that it's almost like how printers are cheap but the ink <clears throat> So same thing GoPro is doing. We're going to give you the body, but accessories to actually utilize it uh, will be very expensive. The magnetic door really pissed me off because I know for a fact that puppy in Indian rupees is a large number, 6,000 rupees. Yeah, it's not worth that. It's not worth that. Barely, barely. Like to me, like if I actually go to GSL, PCB and design all those things, I'm looking at like, especially at 100 to 1,000 pieces, I'm looking at a price of 1,000 rupees. So it's like 6x more that. Again, high margin. It allows the line to go up. Because again, their stock is not good. Like if you compare their stock from 2014 to now, it's a constant decline, constant decline. And I looked into their, um, what you call, uh, earnings report, annual report, so to say. Only core focus is, we have more people in subscription. We have more, and even that line is like kind of saturating right now. So fundamentally, they are not, uh, their stocks is not healthy and the competition is hot. Meaning, uh, you know, DJI, how did they make sure that people actually give them a chance, right? GoPro is a big name. Why would anybody risk this? They realized what was the biggest pain point? Fast charging. They're like, it uh, will give you 80% of the charge in 20 minute time. Now be mindful if you understand lithium ion chemistry, most lithium ion chemistry is 1C, meaning it's going to take one hour no matter what you do. But you can charge, speed charge from 0 to 80% very quickly. So they're like 0 to 80%, meaning you plug it in, in few minutes it will have useful charge. In 20 minutes it will have more than enough charge. Then it is going to take one hour. Again, that's by design of chemistry itself, it can't be changed. And again, people were expecting that if you are changing the battery, if they had upgraded this, where it's like, okay, it will barely give you 40% charge in... 50 minutes it's like eh, it takes 90 minutes to charge gopro batteries 90 minutes today with a new battery with the old battery okay i get it you designed the battery long ago i get it new battery no that's just like no so basically they are 
trying to uh, milk profit from cheap things like new battery, new lenses, new door, new mount, lens mount and all that, and the magnetic mount that is from the bottom. So basically they are just working their ass off to number go up. Number go up, which is not gonna go because again, how can you make number go up when you have competitors? Your competitors are like, what if we give you a gimbal which is far more useful? What if we give you direct Bluetooth trans audio transmission? <laughs> Hundreds of little things translates into big things and not to mention smartphones are like, bro, we are getting waterproof now. So, so uh, basically, the minimal changes that they are making is like take the copy paste con 12 uh, you know GoPro 12 and make it into 13 that's bad they should have waited one year or two years like take their time take your suit time polish the damn thing make a really significant change this annual release is just bad so this really made me sad because it's like i wanted to be good i i'm happy that it has that magnetic system but nothing other than that was like wow it's like Wi-Fi is faster. It's like, no, it's the same Wi-Fi. You just figured out to actually have a code base that can use it. And USB 3 is like, oh. to be fair, only a few mobile phones has USB 3. Only one iPhone has USB 3. So I do understand that part, but <sighs> it's very sad. So this was the presentation on a GoPro 13. <laughs> Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please hit the like button, share it amongst friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I just press dislike, press it twice to show my disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.